this time I ask that we stand as we receive our presiding bishop, Bishop McLeod. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want everyone to stand. Let's just worship him. Let's just, let's just glorify him. Let's magnify him. Let's lift him up. God, we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Come on, church. Let's, let's glorify him. He is worthy to be praised. A good God, a wonderful Savior. Keeping us doing this dark season. Come on, let's worship him. Let's glorify him. He is worthy to be praised. I wish I had a church. Don't mind being free tonight. To the one true and living God, I will live and say this. Let's glorify Him. There's no one like You, Lord. There's no one like You. You kept us. Lord, we thank You tonight. We give You praise and honor and glory. Somebody tell him thank you. Somebody tell Jesus thank you. Let the world know who our God is. We glorify you, Jesus. We thank you. Somebody tell him thank you. It's a beautiful spirit in this place. I am forever indebted to a God that I can never repay. I feel obligated to give him the sacrifice of praise with the fruit of my lips. And Lord, I just want to tell you thank you. Have he kept anybody against your own will? He kept you when you was weak and when you were struggling. God kept you. When all the odds were against you, God kept you. I am forever indebted. Forever. I thank him for every test, every trial. I thank him for the air that I breathe right now. It's poison to the world, but it's life to us. Lord, I want to tell you thank you. We serve a good God. Tell somebody we serve a good God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know we're in the truth. I don't think we're just another church. We, we are not just another church. We are in the truth. And he allowed us and permitted us to be a part of something so great and so wonderful. If you weren't used to fighting before this time, then you better get used to it. The enemy is in the atmosphere. But tell somebody God is in this atmosphere. And I just got to tell him thank you. Here to celebrate 50 years and I will be 65 this month well next month and 50 years ago in 1971 life was totally different I have a scripture tonight in 1st John 5 and 23 read First Thessalonians 5 and 23. And the 
every God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you tonight and we glorify you. We present our whole body, spirit, and soul to glorify you in this hour. Everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. If I would have a thought tonight, holiness in the last days. Tell somebody we're living in the last days. It's something to be different. I thought about it about 50 years ago, around 1971. I wasn't even saved. And I can recall when I got saved, and if you said the word apostolic, they said, what type of church did you go to? You say apostolic, they said, what is that? And then you would have to say the word Pentecostal to get, even give them a glimpse of who we are. And now we are living today and you have people everywhere professing to be apostolic. Do you all love the Lord? But it's obvious that life is different today. It's nothing like it was 50 years ago. And I can recall that life and everything was totally different. I remember my grandma, she would say about judgment day. She would talk about a time when you, you need to get ready because God is fitting to come. Tell somebody you got to get ready because God is on the way. He's, he's getting ready to appear. He is revealing himself. And it's so grateful in these last days that God has given us the information that's necessary for survival. Do anybody here love the Lord? And I thought about it in this life because there's so much that's going on. Death all around us, but life is all around us also. There is more life than it is death. So therefore, I have to glorify him. Because any struggle that I have, I have more comfort than I have problems. I do have someone to go to on hard times. But I got used to it growing up in God. Being alone covenant relationship people not understanding you so therefore how can you praise God and celebrate in such a dark season tell somebody because he's still God he, he's still God regardless of, of what's happening in your life he's still the, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he's our God and he's worthy to be praised I got to praise him I got to give them glory. So I look at everything that I went through in life. Notice in Isaiah 59. Remember, I'm about 65, so I take my time now. Y'all love the Lord? Tell the Lord, thank you. Isaiah 59 and 19, read. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So here we are now in a dark season. And they got all kind of solutions that they, they think are working. And it's so obvious that what man has to offer really isn't working. And now that we are here, we are God's people standing in the midst of a world and a nation that's being judged. Righteous people living in the midst of turmoil. And the only thing we have is our God. Tell us about the only thing we got is our God. The only thing we really got is God. Are you listening to me? I'm not standing here and free and healthy just because I eat a certain way or live a certain way. I'm standing here free and healthy because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm not ashamed of it. Are you listening to me? There's a level of holiness. I, I can recall back in the 1970s, I used to pass by 
the apostolic church. They dressed a certain way. They lived a certain way. And they, they all fellowship a certain way. It was totally different. But that was the requirement at the time. Their adornment, the way they carried themselves, the way they talked, the way they walked, they call it holiness. Holiness wasn't no church. It was the decision that I made that I'm going to live holy before God. It ain't, it ain't the name of the church that we go to. It's a decision how I'm going to live. But tell somebody we're living in the last days now. There's a different kind of holiness today. There's a different requirement that God is asking for his people to do. It's more than just what you put on and the way you look and the way you act. God is calling us to a higher place. Why? Because every problem, everything that's going on is supposed to get us closer to God and draw us closer to one another. I got to give him glory. I got to give him praise. Holiness in the last days. Isaiah, I remember back in the days, back in 1970s and 80s, they used to preach about a highway, highway 35 and 8, a highway to heaven. I'm just going back nostalgic on 50 years ago, how, how the presentation was, because people just knew when I got saved, when I went to that apostolic church, I'm, I'm going to be different, I'm going to act different. I'm going to live different. But here we are now living among a plague. Something that's been released and is in the atmosphere, is in the air that we breathe. But somewhere I read that it's God's will that we prosper and be in good health. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Tell somebody, even if you didn't pray about it, it's God's will. It's God's will that we prosper and be in good health. So as we search the process here, let's go in Michael chapter 6 and 8, read. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. There's a, uh, a process of humility that is required to be free. Being proudful, you can go so far and even create cliques and processes, but there's a relationship through humility. The church used to look at me when I say things like, man, you know what? Things been going real good lately. Uh, I need a hater. I need something to remind me where my help come from. Oh, you listen to me. I, I grew up like that. I can recall in the early uh, times of the 2000s, and I was down there in Brondage, Alabama, and they took me in the woods. The man had the shotgun, and I started praying for him. I said, Lord, don't let this man kill himself. I wasn't scared of death then, and I ain't scared of death now. Death is just a gateway to take us to some place, eternity. Are you listening to me? So it's a life that we live. It's a decision that you made. It's a holiness unto the Lord. What are we supposed to live? Holiness unto the Lord. Where are we at now? Somebody tell God, thank you. It's something that he wanted them to do. It's a life that he wanted them to live. It's decisions that they had to make in that time. And God wanted to understand, look, I want you to understand, I'm concerned about the whole man. Not, not just the man that just speak in tongues and just fellowship and go to church. I'm concerned about the whole man. I'm concerned about your spiritual life and I'm also concerned about your natural life. I'm, I'm concerned the holiness level has come to another place. And then when you begin to, to search the scripture and search the life that God wanted us to have, in 1 Corinthians 3 and 17, it started talking about, he said, and ye are the temple of God. He said, I'm living inside of you. 
They, they don't have to just come to a church edifice to feel my presence. I'm, I'm going to come inside of you and I'm going to live inside of you and you're going to be the temple of God. Are oh, y'all listening to me? Ye are his temple. And he said, if any man defile the temple, they say, God will destroy. Tell somebody we got to take care of this temple. Are oh, y'all listening to me? It's a, it's a decision that you make. It's a life that we live. And it's a requirement that God have for all of us. And in this requirement, he wants us holy. He brought them to a certain place in this life, and he was trying to share things. Let, let's go to Zechariah 14 chapter. Y'all love the Lord? I won't be long. Can you imagine God coming and say, make it all holy? I want, I want every seat holy. I want I want you holy. I want, I want the carpet holy. I want every artifacts in the church, I want it holy. Because at a different time and a different season, it was, a, it was a level. When a plague came and certain things that they had to do, holiness level was different. It, it wasn't just put the blood on the doorpost. Tell somebody we've been covered in the blood of Jesus. It, it wasn't just putting the blood on the doorpost. It was other instructions that they had also. So let's notice here in Zechariah, the 14th chapter in the 20th and 21st verse read. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them, and see if therein, and in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. He said, now let me tell you something. If you live in, in this season, he said, now, now let me tell you one thing. He said, yes, I want you to, the, the temple is sacred. It's a sacred place. He said, but let me tell you something. I want every pot in the temple, I want it sanctified. I want it sacred. Every, everything you got, he said, I want it sacred unto the Lord. He said, so let me tell you something about these pots you've got around the temple. He said, I'm putting it in the category also. Why? Because in a different season, it's a different holiness unto the same God. Oh, you're listening to me. Why, why a plague is released, then he's he telling the people to, to put the blood on the, toe pole, on the doorpost and then to turn around and tell them, won't you roast the lamb and give some bitter herbs because I'm going to give you something for the whole man. I'm not just going to give you something just to be spiritual. I'm giving you something natural so you can survive during these times because we ain't talking about salvation. We're talking about a quality of life. It's a difference if I'm saved and sick. It's a difference if I'm saved and healthy. I'm giving you something that you can walk through this dark place. I'm giving you something. If you want to take it, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the priest's food. I'll give you what the priest ate so the leopard can come and say you're clean or unclean. It ain't for everybody. He said, so every artifact's in here. He told them, he said, even them pots. Why? Because we're living in a different time. Romans 3 and 13. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of apps is under their lips. We're living in a time. I know we don't want to talk about When my mouth, what come in it and what come out it can determine my relationship with God. He said their throat is a sepulchre. 
their mouth have become a grave. It's what's, what's coming out of it and what's been put in it. Tell somebody, we in holiness in the last day. Of course, you still got to be baptized in Jesus' name. You got to have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. But what is that going to do for your health? If God then put a little stipulation in there, look at here, I got something for you. I got some medicine for you. I, I got some fruit on some trees and I got some leaves for you. I got some medicine for you. It was there from the very beginning. Right now, I got some barbecued mushrooms waiting on me at the house. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? In my mind, they can be, they can taste like ribs, they can taste like chicken. I can make it taste like anything I want to taste like. Oh, you're listening to me. So therefore, if I had to change my intake, I'm very careful of my outtake. But now, I got to take focus on my intake because it's celebration time. It's, it's time to rejoice. Survival of 50 years? Look, look how apostolic churches are changing today. Surviving and still standing in the truth 50 years later, still standing for truth and tell somebody we are the truth. Why? Because we got the truth. Holiness in the last days. It's a little different. Yes, I, I, I still dress a certain way. Yes, I still carry myself a certain way. But it's something else in the land. And the deceiver is in the land. Is he out to deceive the very elect of God? But tell somebody he can't get us. He deceiving the whole world. Tell somebody I ain't in the world. That's, that's why deception ain't coming because I ain't in the world. I'm, we, we are very aware. We, we have the information. We have been given instructions. We know the whole process. We can see it taking place. It's just like watching a movie, but it's the world. We sitting here watching something take place. And it's just like watching, turning on the TV and looking at a show and I already know the end results of it. I know the conclusion of this matter. But tell somebody, we got instructions for the day. What character are you playing in this movie? Tell somebody we're supposed to be the people of God. We look different. We act different. Yeah, I'm going to say it, and we eat different. Say what you want to say. You say what you want to say. I was an unhealthy, sanctified preacher. Had on about a, more, a, 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 a hundred pounds or more than this. I stood for the truth. I preached the truth. I lived the truth. Say what you want to say. If anybody should have been caught during this season, it was supposed to be me. Dealing, was dealing with diabetes and high blood pressure, dealing with, dealing with all of these things, and then God gave me something right before Corona. I was in a dilemma because I'm sitting here praying and asking God, why I can't just go to my pastor and he just lay hands on me. He just put his hands on me and with, with your stripes, I'm a heel. Why? I had to be the one to turn around and start something before everything was revealed. He said to help somebody else. Well, you're listening to me. No, we can't teach this and preach this as no doctrine, but it's a very necessary thing today. I got to change my level of holiness. Not only do I have to walk right and talk right, I got to eat right. I got to communicate right. I got to be in fellowship right. I got to love right. I got to obey God right. Why? Because he's a good God. Say what you want to say. 
what you want. You can eat what you want to eat. Because I can't use it as no doctor. But when Corona came to me, I said, you must be on know who you're dealing with. You must be on know nothing. You know, you know how I know it came? My taste left. I said, man, you better give me my taste buds back. <laughs> I wasn't sick. I wasn't sick at all. I said, well, this must be Corona. Because I can't taste nothing, but I'm still hungry. <laughs> Look, let me taste my food. So I told Corona, you got to get the step in. Oh, you listen to it. matter of fact, I, I, I'm just gonna say it. I went and laid hands on some folks with Corona. Didn't have wasn't no fear, won't know nothing. Why? Because he had already visited me and took a little taste out of my mouth, and I told him to leave and he left. So I realized I had power over something that's infiltrating the whole world. I got power over something that's bringing death to people. Got power. Why? Because I got something good going on with God. I'm not going to turn my throat into my grave. When they got a simple remedy. Chicken or mushrooms. Chickpeas or beans. I can take me some gabonzo beans. Are you listening to me? I, I can read the ingredients of plant-based meat and plant-based things and tell, okay, the Impossible Whopper, it got the laxative in it. So different plant-based meat got different things. Some of them ain't no good for you. So now I read the ingredients to find out, okay, if you got a digestive problem, you can maybe eat an Impossible Whopper to get a little flow going. So it's a process. So my holiness level don't just include the way I look and the way I talk because we're living in a different time now. Tell somebody it got to be the way you eat too. Why? So, so, so tomorrow night we can, we can walk into the gala. I don't know what you're going to wear tomorrow. I'm going to try to have on me a tuxedo. Walk in there and breathing good. It's, he's the air that I breathe and breathing and good. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm quite sure there's going to be a special table for us folks who eat different. If not, I got me some stash coming in high. I'll bring me a packed lunch just in case. Do y'all love the Lord? Tell somebody, we're holding this on another level. You look at the people who talk about, I ain't doing that. Then how you going to tell me mushroom costs more than meat? They tell you that it's too expensive to eat this way. No, it ain't. It's cheaper. Once you get all your bases out the way, it's cheaper. Now I got non-apostolic people calling me. Hey, hey, Bishop, what you said? What, what you said? One of, my, one of my family members, one of the members sick. What you said? I said, get out there in that sun. Get you some black seed oil. The nastier, the better. Y'all don't want to hear the truth. You know, now, I wish the Lord would have took my taste buds when it came to the black seed oil. Black seed oil ain't nothing compared to black root tonic. To, to the herbal sin, cell cleanser, black root, uh, black seed oil ain't nothing. It's Kool-Aid. Are y'all listening to me? But if I can walk in a room and folks full of COVID, and I can just go in there and just lay hands and lay hands, lay hands. See, I know when people are scared, so just, just, I, I, I say, just, just stay away from around me because I'm all right. 
Oh, you're listening to me. I, I ain't gonna bother with somebody else's faith. I don't go bother. I, I don't bother with other people's faith. Oh, you're listening to me. But you ain't finna bother with mine neither. Oh, you're listening to me. Tell somebody I love the Lord. I ain't finna bother with nobody who wearing a mask, you know, if that's what you want to do. But but I, if I tell you I already got my mask on, you better believe what I said. Oh, you're listening to me. Why? Why do you call me secret? Why you want me to tell you the information and you don't want nobody else to know? Why? Because your shot ain't working. Your stuff ain't working. I got up this morning. I'm breathing good. I got up this morning and just sat out there and got me some sun. Just like I could feel just vitamin D just coming inside of my body. I could feel energy just flowing through me. I could feel some strength coming from something that we done got accustomed to not being in. I remember 50 years ago, everything you did had to be out there in the sun. The children played in the sun. People worked in the sun. But all the athletes played outside on ball courts and football fields in the sun. And now we done got used to air condition. And God got a remedy coming straight out the heavens that'll shine down on you. The S-U-N is produced by the S-O-N. And then he can turn around and build your immune system by believing in the one that made the firmaments and the heavens believing in Jesus. One of my neighbors passed by and saw me, me and my wife sitting in the yard and her son. He said, hey, y'all sick? No, I'm healthy. You might get sick sitting in that air-conditioned car with your windows up and your mask on. Why you got the windows up and the mask on? I don't make no sense. Ain't nobody even in the car with you. You ask me, am I sick? You sick. You look sick. Y'all love the Lord? I am honored to be a part of something. So, and I don't say this because I was never a title person, a position person. But I feel privileged to be a part of something so real. And so great, God honored us to be called in to this great body of believers. See, and he called some apostles. And not for everybody. Tell somebody, we just part of the song. I'm so glad that he made me part of the song. I'm so glad that I listened that have followed instructions. But now, I'm glad that he informed me. Because as a man of God, it ain't just about us. It ain't just about me. It's about God and his people. And how many souls that we could compel to come to God. And then once a person come, we're concerned about the whole being. We're not just concerned about you just coming to church. Man, I, I try to help folks. Sometimes they don't have no place to stay. They don't have no food to eat. Then they don't have no clothes. I try to think about the whole person. And nowadays, it's very rare. But we are that church that Jesus said, when, when, when I was in jail, did you visit me? When I was hungry, did you feed me? So we got to be very careful what we feed in the day. I told the church, don't kill me by bringing me no fried chicken and no sweet potato pie. No, I, I, I know you love me and you want to cook a dinner for your pastor and so forth. I say, look, I, I appreciate everything you're doing for me, but, but you know I used to love that stuff. So don't kill me now trying to give me some fried chicken and sweet potato pie. Let me live. Let me live. Let me eat my priest's food. Let me walk this walk. 
And just in case, I don't mind you eating and fellowshipping with me. That's Matthew 12 and 4. There was food that only the priests ate. Only they ate. And you, and you can only be invited to it. The sad thing today, we're inviting many and they compel not to. Lord, I want to be saved. I want to be saved and happy and healthy. Are you listening to me? I feel we are the church that's been compelled to still witness to a lost world. We can't be the one. Uh, we go out sometime. The saints go out sometime and knock on doors. And, and, and people, they say, oh, y'all still do that? You, you still go out and witness to people? Tell somebody, we ain't having church with our pajamas on. Sitting at, looking at your pastor on YouTube and got on your pajamas for over a year. You sitting back and say, preach pastor. Sitting in the, in the, in the TV room. And just sitting in there. Go pray the Lord. My cousin came to me. He said, I paid my tithes uh, Sunday. I said, oh, you did? He said, yeah. He said, the pastor say, pay your tithes. He said, I took my money out of my pocket and throw it at the TV. I said, boy, you ain't paid no tithes. <laughs> I said, boy, you need to stop it. Y'all love the Lord. We got to stay in fellowship. We don't mind coming worshiping together. We don't mind coming and praying together. We have no problem with it. While the rest of the world in the dilemma, we really don't even have no problem touching and agreeing. We don't mind coming and standing together and being one. But in these last days where we separate is at the pots. There's a hole in this level that's required in these last days, it's a necessity. It's the air that I breathe. It's the life that I live. It's what I consume in my throat. And what comes out of my throat. And what I put in my throat. Whether I determine whether it's going to be the sepulchre, the grave. So I'm very mindful of where we're at today. Tell somebody I love the Lord. I want everybody to stand. Hallelujah. We're not the social distance church, so just everybody just come down a little closer. Hallelujah. We're still in fellowship. I'm still in covenant relationship with God. But I'm trying to I'm trying to bring as many of my brothers and sisters as I can to the sanctification and the holiness of the pot. Are you listening to me? If you don't mind, just hold somebody's hand that's just next to you. You're holding the hand of life. It's a living being that you're touching right now. As we see what's taking place in the world, you're holding life in your hand. There's a blood flow. There's a heartbeat. There's a God that's keeping the very hand that you're touching right now. The hand that you're holding right now is here by grace and mercy. It regardless of what done happened in the past and what what way they failed at and what all kind of stuff that happened, they still here by grace and mercy. 
it regardless of what people say and what they do some reason God's still holding on to you he won't let you go some reason after all you done done God's decision is I still love you I still want you I'm still with you I still will make a way for you you even breathing where everybody can't breathe you living where death at you got to give him some glory I don't care what a spirit even talking to you and telling you about your own self you serve a good God what that to show mercy to you and you and you and you you hear by his grace and his mercy you're gonna have to praise him you got to glorify him you got to magnify him why got the all out of done god still ain't gave up on you god still won't let you go after all you done done all you done fail he's still tugging at you bothering with you calling you helping you got you breathing and living in a dark season i got the praise give him some glory give him some glory give him some glory give him some glory in spite of what you're going through give him some glory give him some glory glorify him give him glory We're not here like we deserve this. I'm not here like I deserve this. I'm not here like I'm supposed to be blessed like this. I'm here because of his grace and mercy. And because I didn't pass every test. I didn't pass every test. But God passed me through the test. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I give you praise. I give you honor. You're the good God. I wish I had a church. No mind praising. I don't care what they happen. I don't care when you fail. I don't care what mistake you made. God have mercy on you. I got the praise. I can't do what the government say. I can't do what the doctor say. Lord, I got to do what the prophets say. Lord, I give the glory. Praise him, sir. Praise him and give him his glory. Give him an honor. Praise him. Because you know you don't deserve this. He just got it in a hat. He just loved you in a hat. He chose you in a hat. You know you don't deserve it, but you still got it. I'm not standing here as if I deserve it. I know I'm here by grace and mercy. He preserved us. God put his preservative on you that lasts a little longer. His preservative is all over you. It's called the Holy Ghost. His preservative is all over you. I cover you. I'm giving you shelf life. I'm giving you more time. Because <laughs> you're mine. I realize what happened. I realize your failure. I realize your mistake. But don't you see my love? I still love you. You're mine. I won't let you do what you want to do. I want you to live for me. That's why I'm keeping you. Don't be in hell acting like you deserve it. You need to ask your own self, Lord, why you still put up with me? You got to be the love of God. Let's be real. Ain't nobody going to put up with us like God. The letter killeth. The letter brings a definition to sin, and sin brings death. 
So it's his letter. And Lord, we want to thank you tonight. I wish I had some thankful people. We can just be thankful. Thankful, Lord. Thank you for my lungs. Thank you for the air that I breathe. How about such a, Thank you for the mind that you got. Somebody here need to thank you for the mind. You got the, you got the mind of Christ. Thank you for the mind of Christ. You got the mind of Christ. Thank him for the mind. Thank him for the mind. Thank him for the mind. Many have lost the mind, but you still got the mind. You need to thank God for the mind. In the last days, I got the mind. Holy We are the church that's finna celebrate in a dark season. Celebrating 50 years when many are mourning. It's something that is hard to comprehend. I think it's Ecclesiastes 7, chapter, the second verse. And he said, I'd rather come to the house of the morning than the feasting. The man. He said, my ways are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. He said, I'd rather come to the house of the morning than the house of the feast. But why? Because the house of the morning is going to be dealing with something that's supposed to get your mind on God. He said, so that, that's why you see the day As far as Facebook concerned, ain't nobody went to hell. I don't care how you live, I don't care what you do. They say rest in heaven, rest in peace. But you gotta understand something, their mindset. That's the only way you can cope with grief. You either gonna have to drink, smoke, or get high. Or do something when you ain't got God. When, when grief, grief is, you wear grief. Grief is beyond a cry. It's more than a cry. Grief will just come on you. You can have a good day and then all of a sudden, boom, it just hits you. It's on you and you wear it. And if you ain't got the comforter, you need the real comforter. So the Lord said, I'd rather go in the house of the morning and he said, I don't despise a broken heart and a contrite spirit. He said, they have, they have visitation rights. And all this stuff going on around us now, somebody in here ought to be thankful. Somebody ought to be thankful. I know it's a lot going on in this world, but we got a reason to praise him. Tell somebody, I'm going to still praise him. I'm going to still give him his glory. Hallelujah. Why? Because he keeping you. He keeping you. He keeping you. He keeping you. There's some people he keeping because of you. Some of your family and friends and loved ones. The only reason they ain't going nowhere is because God keeping them because of you. He keeping them because of you. Lord, I want to tell you praise. I praise you, I give you glory. Will somebody just tell them, I love you, Lord. Even now. Even now. Even now. Even now. Even now. You the best thing that ever happened to me. Even now. After all the hurt and the pain. Even now. In this dark season. You are good God. You are wonderful God. You are merciful God. Even now. He's a good God. Mary and Martha was mourning. 
Lazarus was in the grave about three days. And then Jesus said, even now, tell somebody I'm one of them even now. I'm an even now saint. I got to praise him even now. Even now. Even now. Even now. Even now. Even now. All right now, praise. All right now, praise. Oh, my shout out. All right now, praise. Now, faith. Now, faith. Now, faith. Now, faith. Now, faith. My shout out about that. He made me different. But I have no problem with that. Huh? He said to me, he said, ain't enough hell been preaching. He said, you're going to open up your mouth. You ain't going to be popular. But I'm going to make you blessed. If we were voting, I know I wouldn't win. I'm going to say, I'm going to bless you anyhow. Soul's going to be saved anyhow. We need to remind people that it is a hell out down there. It's a hell to go to. But to quit listening to all these people standing over, talking about rest in peace. Lord, I praise you. But here we are serving a God that is so merciful that even if he take us home the sting of death is gone the victory of the grave is gone and we can actually celebrate are you listening to me we can actually rejoice he says so I'd rather be in the in the house of the morning them saved people See, they could praise me when nobody else can praise me. Can't nobody praise God like us. I remember going to the to the Holy Land over there in Israel, over there in Orlando, and uh, turn it down some, turn it down some, and I went over there, and it was like a it was an illustration of the steps. And they would walk the steps and sing a praise on this step. Sing a praise, showing how Israel would do it. Walking in the temple, praising God on step one, step two, step three. Giving God a glory. Why they had Jebusites and, and the Canaanites. They had enemies all around. And they, they giving God praise. Giving them going into the temple, praising God. Y'all love the Lord. Tell somebody, don't you let the enemy steal your praise. We praising him anyhow. Y'all know it was rough for me last week. Dealing with my son-in-law. It was rough. And God gave me some peace. The Holy Ghost came and gave me peace. And told me to praise him anyhow. I can rejoice. The world say he was my son-in-law, but really he was my son. And to know that he made it, I got to praise him. I got to praise God. I got to praise God. So you know what that tell me? See, if it's full of poison, then everybody will die. But if there's some life in it, he ate this food over 20 years and made it home. So you don't let people discourage you because they don't like the way you prepare the food. I told the church the other night, I'm reading in the Bible, I'm, I'm, I'm finna go. I read in the Bible, but Jesus came and he was hungry. 
And he said, you got anything to eat? And they brought him broiled fish and honey. And I told my wife, cook me some broiled fish and honey. I just want to eat it because Jesus ate it. It was good enough for him. It's good enough for me. I ain't no alkaline, so let me don't be lying. I ain't lying about alkaline. I ain't no vegetarian. I ain't no vegan. I eat to live the Bible way. I find out what they ate, and I eat it. But I still ain't eating no meat. Y'all pray for me. Y'all love the Lord. I love God, and I love his people. There are no people like you. It don't matter the way a person feel about me. I love y'all. I love Church of God, the Bible. I love my pastor, Apostle C.A. Kyle. And what that do? That make me free. I'm free. Y'all love God? Tell somebody we're in the best. And he saved the best for last. Now, in my conclusion, I feel we right on the brink of the rapture. It ain't no time to be playing. We don't need no private detectives in the church. You don't need no I spy in the church or nothing. This ain't no time to be playing. God can come anytime. And you better be ready. I told the saints the other night. You know where we at? See, when the bridegroom appear, ain't nobody giving away no oil. Don't come ask me for no oil. When that trumpet sound is on, they should lay hands on me. No, I got to go. Uh -uh. I, I, hear that, I, I hear that trumpet saying, come up hither. Come, come on, lay hands on me before you go. Uh-uh, I, I don't know how much. I got just enough to go. You ain't getting no oil. There's going to be a day when we ain't going to give you no oil. Tell somebody, I, I, I got enough to go. Well, I, we still laying hands right now. But when we hear that trumpet, don't, don't run to us. The Bible says that we, we got all, we just ain't sharing it. I need enough for that, for that uptake. For that suction. I actually envision something like a tornado. You know, people talk about the rapture and they just show this big old bright light. There ain't gonna be a light. There's supposed to be a, there'll be a little wind just sucking real strongly. <laughs> Whatever way it comes, I want to be caught up. Whatever way it comes. Y'all love the Lord? Tell the Lord, thank you. I love you all. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together for our presiding bishop. Amen. If you were blessed by the work, put your hands together. Amen.